people that gave last Sunday, our giving was 1.4. That money is not by law, it's the gift of the people of God. But because I know some of you are not in like myself, and you feel, how can I participate? As I lift up my hand so that I can get an envelope, you can also do the same. Because I wasn't in. And maybe you are not in and you want to give towards uh, the building of the cathedral. I did an envelope myself. Anybody that was not in last Sunday, like myself, if you need an envelope, please just lift up your hand and you get an envelope. There is, uh, Leia needs an envelope here so that we can join you. There is another hand over there so that when you will be blessed, we will also share the blessing. There is another hand over there. Ashes, please look at the hands. We, we are confessing we were not in. Though you thought we were in, eh? We are just confessing. We weren't in, so please you can give us the envelope so that we can honor the Lord in our giving. Uh, now, if we needed 20 million and you have given 1.4, how much is remaining? 18.6. Oh, tell your neighbor 18.6. So tell your, encourage your neighbor, please prepare in the next giving. Prepare the next giving so that we can give some more to the Lord. Aiki to Taijenga, Aibu Dogo Dogo, Amuna, Amauna Imani Shulia, Nibayako, Akinu Kiona Naya, and Atoko Najasho from Mikono Muache, Shika Yuyako Naimani. This thing, we will do it. We will do it. We will do it. Amen. Nile Kubo Hapa Nia Joseph. Kwa Nile Joseph, Tua Na Amini Nia Ezekan. Si tumushine na tusembe, Amen! Amen! Yeah, it's going to work. Thank you. Uh, Rafael Akatoka. I wanted to tell him thank you kwa sababu mekuunga mkono sana kwa jambo hilo. Amen. Wana sifuwe? Si chachi nipoa sana? All right. Mwabie jirani yako kufa, lazima uta kufa. Upende, usipende. Lakini mwambie tirani yako mimi sifi mwaka huu. <laughs> yeah. Benevolent warfare inatusaidia na kidogo, si ndio? Na fadhali even if it is your mother, your father, your relative, you can register for them and I'm sure that you can be you, one, one of these days you you can get help. Ukipigwa 50 dhao hivi. Hiyo hata watu wengine wakitaka kuja unaweza amua what about a cooler? You see, go to Pepper Willy, but you are relative to Uziki. Pepper has no Uziki. That's the whole idea. I know some of you feel so bad that you never died last year because you would have benefited. Me, Miss Tagging Ufa, Lakina Takutoa, Mugine as I dig. Mobiti and Yako Mugine as I dig. So there will be registration going on. We need to register and then. So the registration is going on. Please, let's do that. Um, if you are visiting us for the very first time, we want to welcome you in the house of the Lord. Visit us, the very first time us. You've never been here since you are born and born again. Or oh, since you are born. Maybe when you are born, you lived around here. But since you are born again, you never walked into the house of the Lord. Can we see any visitor? Any visitor? We don't have a visitor now, eh? Oh. There is one. Oh, they are, those are not visitors. All of you come, you're not visitors. How can you be visitors only because you're in a tent? Yeah. We are the same members. So this is our brother who uh, God blessed him and they went to Pandesa West. And when I went to Dallas last year, lo and behold, you know who I met? I met this guy, but lo and behold, where? In Dallas. I met Kuza Mashamba. Amen. 
Praise the Lord Church. Amen. If you are up as we are we are to put up the Jesus is the Lord this morning. We are still praising God. speed 
and we met with the Nissan Bell at to eight. We were four of us occupant, uh, one, uh, one lady, mature, and two young children, three years and twelve. And I thank God we are all of us alive. We were taken to Kabudo Hospital in Niji I was calling her when I was in Kabudo at about seven or six, something like that. The medical was able to get to me at about nine. I was still there. I passed through the police. The medical was told to the police station. When I saw it, I, I knew God is, uh, is able to save and even to, to deliver. And uh, the process of the whole week it has been so gracious. The police there, they are so friendly. They are calling me brothers. Uh, they have helped me, they have assisted me, they are calling me. Even tomorrow we went for the abs uh, abstract. And uh, everything is well. But the car is lit, uh, uh, light off. It's already in the, in the studio area. And uh, I'm expecting good for new benefits. Thank you for those who have prayed with me, the benefit team, our neighbors, and friends. And those who have even posted a new car, grew one. I receive it in Jesus' name, Amen. and the many things are happening. I was telling my bishop, in the course of three weeks, uh, three months, things have happened to me, and uh, I need God, I need to pray. Very shortly, I will not elaborate, but one, I lost my job in, in October. In December, I lost all my IDs, my medical cards, everything, and now God wanted, uh, the devil wanted to take my life, but I'm safe and secure, and I'm moving praises. Praise with us, give God glory with us, because he is the king and our sin. We want to pray for our brother, Sasan. And I will use my preacher who preached to where I was yesterday. Yesterday I was in a place where there was a preacher who preached something that was very interesting. That at one time in life, Job was wealthy. Right? Then the second phase of Job, he was very poor and very sickly. But the third phase of Job, oh my goodness, we want to declare to our brother, the first phase, he was just well. And now he feels so low that the third phase of his life is going to be better. I want to ask the ministry to please let's come and anoint him as we release him from those powers that are holding him and the congregation please if you can lift up your hands uh, towards the front as we do this our gracious heavenly father the father of our lords and savior jesus christ this morning we honor the living god we come to praise the living God. We come to honor the living God. And Father, we know that the devil is a liar. And all what he comes to do is to steal. He wants to kill. He wants to destroy. That's what he has come to do. But Father, we stand here with our brother and say he missed it. He missed the killing part. He missed the destroying part. He has also missed the stealing part. Because today we declare the devil what you have taken from our brother, you are going to return it now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray that he will get a better job in the mighty name of Jesus. His document will be replaced in the mighty name of Jesus. And his life is saved in the hands of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God will pray for a cover upon him. From the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Lord God will declare he is the blessed of the Lord. And he is going to walk in the land of the living. His shoulders are high. And Father Lord God may you encourage him this week. May you cause him to see a door opening before him. In the mighty name of Jesus, to the praise and to the glory of your dear name, O Lord God. 
Tuatangaza shetani ataachilia. Yes. Hii Kenya itaachilia. Yes. Hapa Nairobi pataachilia. Yes. Hapa Zimmerman pataachilia. Yes. Baraka za ndugu yetu. Yes. Karika jina la Yesu Kristo. Nothing can hold back yes. the blessings of our Father. Yes. We pray that the name of our Lord will be a strong tower to this family. Yes. They will run into it and they will be saved. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the Lord praise for your miracle. Expect a miracle every day. Expect a miracle when you pray. If you believe in God, He will find a way to perform a miracle for you. The person that is going to believe God for his miracle is who? Is me. The person who is going to pray is who? Is me. And if I believe in God, then God will find a way to perform a miracle for me every day. Amen. Our speaker has come home, you know. Uh, Alice calls her the sister of the other mother who lives across the Yahusha. But she came with somebody else who has never been here before. Wow. You've never been here before. But you look like you were here before the other, the other week. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. We're going to welcome our, our speaker and she will welcome our friend. And I know that God is going to, to bless us. Remember our service is two hours. Let's all stand up and welcome the speaker, the prophet of the Lord, who carries the word, your word, that can trigger a miracle for you. Bless the name of the Lord. Let's receive the servant of the Lord. Let's receive the servant of the Lord. Let's receive the servant of the Lord. Our sister, D. Davis. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. I'd like to first of all give honor to the God who is the head of my life, the King of glory, Jehovah Jireh. He is everything to me. Today I bring you greetings from USA, Cincinnati, Ohio. I give honor today for my husband in his absence, which will be joining me on next week on Tuesday. After we leave um, on next Tuesday, we'll be heading out to um, Kissimmee. We'll be there for 10 days and we'll return back to Nairobi for another five or six days to finish the work here while we're here this time. It is truly an honor to be again once here before you, amongst my brothers, my sisters, my daddy, and my mama, and all those that are in the house of the Lord this morning. I do want to also acknowledge the special one here. This is Sister Kisa Brooks. She is one of my daughters in the Lord, and God allowed her and permitted her the opportunity to come this morning to be with us here in Kenya. When God opened the door, she walked in it, and here she is today. So we praise God for the new one that has embarked upon a new territory of expanding the kingdom. Sister Kisa. Um, I'm so blessed to be here with Believe God always, no matter if you can't see, see what it is God's doing in your life, continually say to yourself and declare, God is going to do something great in my life. I thank God for his faithfulness. I honor my husband and his absence, my pastor, <laughs> and um, her husband, um, the mighty men and women of God of this house and all of the service of the Lord on today. Continually be encouraged to know that God is faithful and he is well and able to perform any and everything that it has to do according to his plan in your life. Stay blessed and encouraged and know that Jesus loves you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just give the Lord a round of applause.
a brother that has gone through numerous of things because of his life and what God has in store for him. How many of us know that when we decree a thing, it's so? Amen. Hallelujah. And today we, we decree the harvest blessings upon each of us this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just give him one more shout of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, you may be seated in the house. Praise be unto the God. These last two days, uh, which was Wednesday and Thursday, I was blessed to be able to be with you all uh, for a two-day revival, and we began to deal with a paradigm shift. We also was looking at how do we walk in new wineskins. For those of you that were not, were, was not there or was not able to be there on that uh, all the last two days, I just want to give you three words to kind of catch you up because I do believe it's profitable. Three words that we talked about through the course of the two days. The first one was paradigm. Paradigm is defined as something that is a created model or pattern. It's a standard in which we process. Paradigm. When we think of paradigm, it has to do with our mindset and how we perceive, how we process how we execute whatever it is in our life based on the information that we've received. So it is a created mo model or pattern, standard in which we process. Govern. Govern means to, to direct, to control, to regulate by authority, or influence. When we govern something, just as we have those that are in leadership or have some type of jurisdiction, not only those that are, are higher as it relates to in politics or in our jobs or things such as that, it's individuals that have the opportunity to govern. They govern at different levels or dimensions. But we all, as the body of Christ, have the ability to govern. Amen. The next word is power. Power is the strength or the force needed to rule. Power. Power is the source, the strength, or force needed to rule. And authority is the right to do so. So we here today as body of believers, ambassadors for the kingdom of heaven, with the power of the Holy Spirit, we have been given the essential, most important tool to help us to, to rule, to reign, to have authority, and also to decree a thing in it itself through the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we think about that today, it's going to lead us into our message today. Today's topic is invade and unlock the kingdom of God in triumph. I said invade and unlock the kingdom of God in triumph. When we think about triumph, that's a place of victory. That's a place to where we don't have to work, we just decree it. We don't have to lift a finger, we just begin to call it forth by the power of the Spirit. That is based on the three main points that I gave you as it relates to paradigm, governing, and power. When we have the power of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God says that we have the ability to charge angels to come before our life. Amen? Amen? I'm going to give you some scripture this morning. I'll be coming out of Genesis. I'll just give you one scripture out of there. Genesis, the 29th chapter, and I will read the 21st verse. And, 21. And, it, and it reads, And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. Let us go to Deuteronomy 33 and 23. Deuteronomy 
Malachi 33 and 23 says, and Nephtali did to eat. He said, Oh, Nip to, to not lie, satisfied with favor and full with the blessings of the Lord, possess thou the West and the South. It says, To possess thou the West and the South. Amen. This morning we're going to be dealing with this moth as it talks about invading and unlocking the kingdom of God. As we read, it says, Genesis had told Jacob to go and to lie with his wife that he may know. And that basically at that time, if we think about it, it was to produce a seed of something that was going to be brought forth. And it goes on to say, even here in this Deuteronomy 33 and 23, it's also telling us that we're satisfied with favor. And that to uh, nigh, that basically we're in that hour and that season of this month as we begin to celebrate what comes in the showering blessings of the Jewish calendar. And it begins to tell us that it is full with the blessings of the Lord that not only will he possess thou the west and the south, but that same blessing is reciprocated to us as a body of Christ that have been drafted into the power of his spirit through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. We look here, it talks about, now I'm going to read uh, one verse in Habakkuk 3 and 19. Let's go there quickly, please. Habakkuk 3, 19 says, The Lord God is my strength, and he will make my feet like hind's feet. And he will make me to walk upon my high places, to the chief singer on my string instruments. Amen? Amen? Amen. So again, this morning we're dealing with invade and unlock the kingdom of God in triumph. For both, again, I just shared that we're in the month to where we're beginning to look at how Niftanai, he, this is the month to where we, separate, we celebrate who he represents. That is one of the tribes that we are dealing with today in this hour of this month, which his name means the sweetness is to me. So when we think about this month, we're talking about gathering in the things that produce something that is sweet, that we can begin to just enjoy based on a time that we can have to where we can just bask in the presence of the Lord and know that he has already spoken and has told us that we can release the, uh, the uh, things that he has desired for us in this season. It's so vitally important, body of Christ, that as we continue to push into the things of God, that we continue to allow the Holy Spirit to be our driving force that begins to speak to tell us when to walk, when to talk, when to shout, when to lift our hands, when to decree, and when to refrain from speaking. The Holy Spirit is so vital in our movement in the kingdom that it begins to be so intentional about telling us and showing us how we must allow him to be the driving force. Because when we align with the calendar of the Jew Judaic Jewish calendar and align it as being the one new man according to Ephesians 2.15 that has been engrafted in by the blood of Jesus into his, his kingdom, we will understand the three words that I gave you as it relates to paradigm, government, and power, and authority. Because when we understand how we are connected to the bloodline of Jesus, and what he did on the cross, because he loved us so much, and then he said, I'm gonna, I love you so much that I'm going to send something back so great that will seal you until the day of redemption, which is the power of the Holy Spirit, we have the most explosive gift that lives inside of us that gives us the power to overcome any and everything that the enemy attempts to hold back and take from us. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. This today, as we look here in this time, the month is a dove. The month that we're in is a dove. This month here represents the 12th month of the Jewish calendar. This month means that we're in a time to where we need to gain insight of strength. We need to know that in the power of the Holy Spirit, we have strength. Because when we think about it in school, when we read books, we learn information and we gain knowledge. Oftentimes that knowledge just comes to help us to mechanically get through the things that we may do vocationally. It may help us to learn. We may read books on our relationships, how to 
be better in relationships. We may read books on how to um, learn how to be a better communicator. Whatever we do when we go and read books or gain knowledge is for use for something that hopefully is good. But in this season of gaining knowledge, in this season of being able to get, gain back what we need from God, it's about connecting in the connecting in the redemptive work of Christ that will give us the roadmap, which is the new path through the Holy Spirit to clearly align with what he needs to give us today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This month, I've heard that we, you all have been speaking as well as we are in the States about the power of the Holy Spirit. I tell you, the power of the Holy Spirit, once you get to a point you're walking in and you're living in the overflow, it's almost like you get so contagious and, and so excited about the overflow that you can't stop talking about it because you're so excited. Sometimes you want to go to bed at night, but the Holy Ghost that's inside of you just starts running out. You want to sleep and it just begins to bubble out of you. That is the hour today that we're living in where God is giving the overflow blessing of the Holy Spirit that we can know when the enemy comes in like a flood, how to subdue him, how to arrest him, how to cancel any assignment that he tries to come against us with. Because when you know when we send the angelic angels before him, God always makes every crooked place straight for us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This month as well is a time that we find our supply. We're here now, and I was here last year, and they were talking about the, um, the vision of building the kingdom. Years past, I heard when they wanted to add, I believe it was 20,000 souls to the kingdom of God. 25,000 souls to the kingdom of God. So if you understand how God is continuously unveiling what he's trying to do in the kingdom. He's trying to accelerate us to where the time that was lost because we were in our wildernesses and we didn't understand. He's accelerating time that we can catch up and to get everything that we have lost in past seasons. In this season, though, in this month, this is the month to where we find supply. Somebody say find supplies. We need to find some supplies that's going to help us to get the work done. Amen? We can't do it on our own. We need some power that will work before us to when we go into places that have our stuff to build the kingdom, that we can just go in and subdue it. Hallelujah. We don't have to ask for it. It's waiting for us to just show up and to get what belongs to us. Amen? I heard a couple years ago, I believe, or it may have been last year, where Bishop was talking about the uncommon harvest. Well, we're now walking in the uncommon harvest through the manifestation of what is happening right now. The cathedral is starting to be built. The grounds are starting to turn over. So we are now in the actual manifestation of the uncommon harvest. Hallelujah. In this season... We want to also remind ourselves that this time right now is characterized by true identity revealed in both the natural and the spiritual realm. We're in a time now where as things are being revealed to us by the Spirit that it may come out to be manifested here on earth. Hallelujah. We don't have the Holy Spirit just to have it as a showcase. The Holy Spirit gives us power to go in to the place that the enemy has robbed and stolen and taken from us to where we just go back. He's not no longer do we have to take it. He's going to willfully give it back because of the power of the Holy Spirit that lives, rules, and abides within us. Hallelujah. So we're now in a place strategically to when we find ourselves becoming weary and well-doing we got to begin to do what I call spiritual exercises. Hallelujah. Anybody want to do a spiritual exercise this morning? That means that when everything else has failed, he said that the main weapon that we have against the enemy is the assault weapon of praise. When you're prepared to begin to take an enemy out or knock down a wall that has got into your, into your, into your place, God is saying if you would begin to use your assault weapon, which is an offensive weapon of defeating the enemy, the enemy will come down. And what that looks like is when you begin to praise the Lord, hallelujah, when you begin to lift your voice, hallelujah, when you begin to shout for joy, hallelujah, when you begin to give God the glory, hallelujah, it says that blessings from the Lord will begin to fall down to where we don't have to do anything but continue to stand in awe of him for what he is doing in the land. So what we do is spiritually exercise the gifts that God has given to us. That 
preachers no longer preaching and stopped. Uh, you got to become the instrument uh, that can invade the kingdom of darkness uh, and enter in and take it by force. Hallelujah. 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 Even in your valley experience, you got to see your victory. Even when your problems seem greater than your provision, you have to see your victory. And seeing your victory, you're going to see the promises. This is the month to know that what has been hidden or covered over because of the stuff we've gone through. God said if we open our eyes to his spirit, he says we will begin to connect it with the redemptive work. And it will begin to produce a releasing. Somebody need a release, hallelujah. We need a releasing that can only come through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because when you get to release, it's going to produce a celebration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that before we get to church, to come to worship, you know, I said if we come in before the service even starts and just come in dancing, come in praising, come in anticipating, come in expecting, even before the worshipers and the praisers get up to sing, come in praising the Lord, come in happy to see what Jesus is going to do. Don't you know that that's a way to invade the kingdom of darkness to where we ain't got to spend a lot of time wasting. God is trying to encourage the body that has the most precious gift that you will ever receive. He's saying if you stir it up, use it to the benefit that he can release everything that he has for you. This is also a time to establish a clear, a clear strategy. Many of us have gone through times and seasons where we've got knowledge and information. But information or knowledge without application is no good. God is great. We can quote the scripture, read the scripture, dance the scripture. But when it becomes a living fruit to where you put feet to it, you begin to walk it out by faith. It will begin to produce an overflow and it will produce a glory from God that we will know that it only came from him. Hallelujah. But we must put feet to our, our words. We have to also understand that we don't have to fear the giants, which have caused us in past seasons to have fear. But we can also know that God has given us power over them as well. We have to even in this season right now guard ourselves from idolatry. Worshipping other things other than God. If we are worshipping our situation or our circumstance, the enemy has invaded us. But it's time for us to invade him. It's time for us to put him where he belongs, which is under our feet. Hallelujah. It's time to put him where he belongs, which is under our feet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's time to uproot. Somebody say uproot. uproot. In me. In everything everything. That, destroys, that destroys. That eats away. From me. Prospering, prospering. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. It's time to uproot. Don't we know when we allow the enemy to oppress us. He causes us to become depressed. And when we get depressed. We can't move. When we get depressed, we can't move. Because the only the enemy has come in and oppressed us. The word says that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is freedom. Today, in the body of Christ, we have to come in with the mindset, which is the shift of thinking that things are going to be the same as usual. We have to expect God to show up in a whole nother place. That you can behold him in a whole nother manifestation. But God is trying to get the body.
to realize the times that we're in, he's trying to release the double portion. He's trying to get us to walk in the overflow to where when we go into these, these, these Egypt lands that are still out here, as the, as the minister earlier was speaking about the government and the, and, the, and the environments of violence and death and disease, when he said, let's go in and take authority. We have to agree with heaven and take authority. Hallelujah. If we don't agree with heaven, we're agreeing with the wrong thing. And we won't live in triumph, we'll live in tragedy. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to remind us back to the key text here. Here in Habakkuk, let us quickly go back there to chapter 1. Remember what we're talking about, invading and unlocking the kingdom of God in order to triumph. How many is wanting to triumph in this hour? How many is tired of just feeling, oh, I just went through a motion? Hallelujah. How many is ready to just feel the joy of the Lord being the strength? Hallelujah. Here in this passage of scripture, we're going to look at real quick. It begins to talk about here in chapter 1. I'm going to quickly just go through it for the sake of time. But I'm going to read the first four verses. It says, the prophecy that Habakkuk the prophet received. It says in verse 2, how long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not say. Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abound. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked him and the righteousness so that justice Justice is perverted. Verse 5 says, look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if I were to tell you. Here we see that Habakkuk is looking out amongst what is going on around him. And he's, he's getting weary and he's looking at how are we going to get through this place? How are we going to overcome this place? Because it looks too great. And those that are in this place are basically appearing to be overtaking us. He says, how long? All of us today have cried out to Lord, how long, Lord, will we stay yoked here in this place? How long must I call upon you for help? But I don't sense you hearing me, Lord. I've cried out unto you, but I don't see a change. Three says, well, why do you make me to look upon these things? Why can't I just enjoy the goodness of you? Why can't I just live this holy, sanctified, glorious life and just skip on into glory? He's asking, why are you allowing me to see these things, Lord? Four says that therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. Meaning that we as a body have prayed and travailed and fasted and sought the Lord time in and time out. And sometimes we get weary because we haven't seen the results that we're looking for. We say, Lord God, when are you going to show up? When are you going to invade this place so where your power, your Shekinah glory just fills the temple and people just get slain by the power of the Holy Spirit? When are you going to show up? Here's the Lord telling the Lord answers in five, and he says, look. Look at the nations around you. Look at the things that's around you. He says, for I am going to do something. That means that we can't look at what we see in the natural as our end. We have to look at what God is seeing even in the midst of what that is. Because when you look into the hollow of the storm, that's where you will find the peace of God. But even in the midst of our storm, sometimes storms fall on us, but 
is their small g, God. Verse 12 says, Lord, are you not from everlasting? Habakkuk is wondering, oh God, all these things are happening, but aren't you the everlasting God? He says, my God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed. The Lord God has appointed them to an execute judgment. Since you, my rock, have ordained them to be punished. Chapter 2, real quick, verse 3 says, For the vision is for an appointed time. God is saying today that as he's sharpening the power of the Holy Spirit, he's refine-tuning it like an instrument. He's taking what's inside of us in the Holy Spirit and he's, he's making a new sound. He's creating a new movement. What we once had when we first received the Holy Spirit has to have some more added to that to where we can become affectionate to perpetuate the kingdom of God. Here Habakkuk is saying, Lord, are you not everlasting? My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed time to execute judgment. Habakkuk is now turning his posture slightly. I say, I'm tired of going through this stuff. I'm tired of being sick and tired, of being beat up, tore up from the floor up, coming to church and still feeling the same way. I need a, I need a miracle. I need something to show up in a new way that's going to give me a new hope, a new belief of an expected end. I need something that's going to feed me, that's a fresh manner, that's going to cause me to believe that even when everything around me is crumbling, that I'm yet going to have the provision of the power of God to sustain this thing. Hallelujah. And the only thing that we want to begin to pull is from heaven to when we ask him to release the fresh manner. Hallelujah. We need fresh manner. Hallelujah. Fresh manna. My God. Fresh. Hallelujah. He says, when you've eaten all that you've eaten, he says, don't save none for tomorrow. He says, you need a new fresh anointing that's going to break and destroy the yokes of the territories and the regions and the realms that you're about to go in and invade for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Here in verse, we see here in verse um, 3, it says, for the vision is for an appointed time. That means God is waiting for an, an appointed time that his sons and daughters will rise up and begin to prophesy and begin to speak the oracles of God that comes from the place that we've never experienced. He said there's an appointed time, but at that end it shall speak and not lie, though they tarry and wait for it, because but surely it will come. It will not tarry. That means I'm ready, whether we're ready or not, it's coming. Amen. I said whether we're ready or not, it's coming. Amen. Because God is even right now all of the earth raising up a remnant that says for you, Lord, I live, and for you, Lord, I die. For you, Lord, I will trust even until the ends of the earth. He's raising up a remnant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Here in verse of chapter 3, it talks about where Habakkuk, after he's asked, he's pleaded, he's questioned, now it seems as if Habakkuk is getting to understand. Here it seems where he's finally aligning and understanding through a paradigm shift. Initially in chapter 1 and 2, he was inquiring and questioning. But by the time we get to chapter 3, God begins to reveal to him his communication style shifts. He no longer is asking why. There's starting to be a celebration that is boiling up with anticipation that God is about to do something that's going to invade this earth and bring kingdom from heaven. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I understand in all of your deeds. 
people to arise out of darkness, enter into the kingdom of light with a song that the angels can't sing. You got to know that you've been redeemed. You've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Can't nothing take you out. The only thing it can do is take you over. I'm looking for my stuff. Every time I come to Kenya, I'm looking who got my stuff. There's an inheritance that has been laid up in heaven that God says you got to go to the highways and the byways and take back everything that the enemy stole. See, I may not have been born in Kenya, but I got some roots in Kenya. Ha, yeah. I got roots. And way back in 2004, the Lord impregnated me <laughs> with the seed of understanding that you're going back, Kanye, to the place where the seed was first birthed. And when you go back, you're going to grab hold of every part of the inheritance that I have earmarked for you before the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. So I don't come here just to come to enjoy a vacation. I'm coming in looking to invade territory. I'm coming in looking to tear down strongholds. I'm coming in to dominate. I'm coming in to take, make people uncomfortable. I don't want to no longer let them be comfortable. We got to get to a place that when the Holy Spirit is moving, you got to just begin to make people uncomfortable. Ha, Shabbat. Hallelujah. Yet the Holy Spirit ain't making nothing uncomfortable. We have to ask, what are we invading? Ha, yet. Every time we open our mouth, we become a vehicle. We become a vehicle to take dominion. Hallelujah. Today, we want to know this. As we invade, we are moving in this last day. This is the latter day conflict. God is saying this is a latter day conflict. We can have car wrecks and sicknesses and diseases. But if you got the great I am, Hale, Hale, that is standing up in you, that says I give you power to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I give you power to lay hands on the deaf and dumb spirit. Not the ones that can physically not hear or understand, but the spiritual deaf and dumb ones that has become perplexed by the lifestyle of religion and has caused their relationship with God to be hidden under a bush. God is saying, come out from under the bush. Take what you have in the power of the Holy Spirit and begin to engage this fight. It says God's people have always been meant to prevail the gates of hell. We have never been told that we're supposed to negotiate and bargain. But we've been given power to bind and to loose. When you start binding and loosening some stuff through the power of the Holy Spirit, Hallelujah. you're going to start seeing his manifestation. Amen. To do that, we must unlock. Here's the new thing which we have to do with the Holy Spirit. We have to unlock a new sound. A new sound means that it comes from the belly, out of the spirit, and it begins to erupt something that is so much greater than we ever said or had. And it begins to bring the revelatory knowledge on how we are to invade and unlock the sound of heaven for today in order for us to triumph in the days ahead. He's also releasing a corporate mantle. Everything that hits your head hits the body. This, cor this corporate mantle will incorporate faith and give you more uh, synergy. It brings things to change instantaneously. We don't have time to wait months and years. We need it right now. He is releasing a mighty troop right now to come and to show up. Tonight, I say, excuse me, today I say unto you, it's time to invade every place that God says is yours.
and take it by force. It's time for you to be as John the Baptist said until now that the kingdom of God is suffering violence. But the violence is taking it by force. But one thing in taking it by force, we have to know that joy is our portion. Hallelujah. And increase is our portion. Hallelujah. And actually, uh, St. Matthews 11 and 12 says that you have, if somebody or the enemy's taking something from you, you have the a legal right to go and invade that territory and have it returned back to you with the authority given to you by God. Today, as we close, we are rejoicing in the joy of our salvation, knowing that we dwell in his holy presence, that we may absorb a place of refreshment that can only come of the Holy One. Hallelujah. Amen. Be blessed in the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Let's give a big picture up.